it's time again for Saints of Bengal. Uh, she learns Italian now. Every Wednesday? From the witness. Yeah, yes. from translation, she can yeah. learn. So today we are continuing the story of uh, Sri Radha Raman Charantas Baba. Last time we were reading that he chased out cholera from Puri and even he was chasing Yamaraj, uh, how it seems. Um, Mars, was, yeah, exactly. And in one moment, uh, yeah. you can turn so he is like looking like uh, there is contact us. Yeah. Huh? Baba Mahasaya. Contact us. You can earn daily 28,000 rupees. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Advertising good. Try to catch you. Uh, maybe go to that there. Uh, you can mute microphone. You are talking. Okay. One day, Baba Mahashaya was sitting in the ashrama, surrounded by his companions. He burst out with a start. Oh, how awful! The whole Dharma is going to be in turmoil. All the nine stars are terribly agitated. Lawfulness will prevail everywhere. The service of Jagannat will be jeopardized. Dissension and discord will destroy the peace of every home. After three or four days, this began to happen. One morning, when the inner temple of Jagannath was opened, a bundle containing fish was found lying in front of the altar. No one knew how it happened in spite of the fact that all the doors were locked and sealed as usual. A two-year-old calf, calf, baby cow, fell in the well from which water was drawn for the bath of Jagannath on the Snana Purnima day, or the day of bath, the calf died. Every day, some untoward things happened in the temple and outside. And, and outside, yeah. There was conflict and disturbance everywhere in the city. Baba Mahashaya called Balaram Das and said, something must be done to contain the stars, otherwise things will worsen. We shall have to worship the stars and do fire sacrifice and mantra japa. But before it, we do that, we shall have to do Nam Sankirtan Yagya for nine days. During the first three days, the stars will try to torment and torture and create as much disturbance in the Yagya as they can. We will have to do the Nama Yagya with determination and single-mindedness. 
Sankirtana will be done in a closed space. No one will go out of it and no one from outside will be allowed to come into it. From time to time, I shall ask you to do what Nitai wills, what Nitai wants. You will have to do it blindly, without making any protest or inquiring about its purpose or propriety. Baba Mahashaya made everyone living in the ashrama drink a glass of purified water, boiled with some herbs and leaves. He drank a glass himself, then smearing his body with water, he began to say to himself, Maya has started entering slowly into the ashrama in the form of articles unsuitable to the life of non-attachment and bhajana. These must be discarded. If they are given away to others, they will be paid for their bhajana. Therefore, they must all be put to fire. So after returning from the Jagannath temple that day, he asked one of his disciples to bring from his room a costly silken chador which someone has brought for him a few days back. As soon as he brought the chador, he lighted a matchstick and set it on fire. When the chador was in flames, he went dancing happily into his room and brought one by one his cotton chadar, mosquito net, cushion, quilt, pillow, and every other thing he had and put it in fire, in flames. Everyone watched the bonfire in surprise and disbelief. But no one had the courage to say anything to him. Next morning, he asked everyone in the ashrama to bring his clothes and every other thing he possessed. They began to bring them out. If anyone tried to hide anything, he could not. Because the moment he came out, Baba said angrily, naming that particular thing, You slave of Maya, why have you concealed that? Go and bring it at once. When everything was brought out, and collected at one place, including chair, table, coat, and almira. Baba set fire to the collection. Flame blazed up, and Baba Mahashaya asked everyone to circle around the fire with kirtana. Many people gathered to see the fire. But Baba was busy all the time going 
around the ashrama to see if anything was left out. If he found anything, he brought it and put it in fire. When he was satisfied that everything was set to fire, he said to Balaram Das in serious tone, Look, Balaram, tomorrow Nama Yagya shall begin. Ask everyone to be ready. Close all the gates of the ashrama. During the Yagya, no one inside the ashrama must go out, and no one outside must come in. Whatever I need during this period, you must provide from outside. Just now, you give me 100 rupee coins. So Balaram went to bring the coins. In the meantime, there came uh, other Balaram. Balaram Brahma Ravar a uh, zamindar of Kendrapara, zamindar is probably position, some, who wore a ring uh, adorned with nine different kinds of jewels, each corresponding to the, to the one of happened. Yeah, I lost the page. One second. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, who, so, this Balaram Brahmaravar, who wore a ring, studded with nine different kinds of jewel, each corresponding to one of the nine stars. Since the nine jewels, I think these stars, what they are mentioning here, here it means nine planets, like for, in astrology. Since the nine jewels were required for the Yagya, the ring was taken. The coins brought by Balaram Das were put in nine earthen pots, pots, in nine pots, which were filled with water and kept at a proper place for the Yagya. At night, Balaram Das brought the Mahaprasad of Jagannath which everyone took and went to sleep. But Baba Mahashaya did not sleep. Throughout the night, he was busy cleaning every corner, every crack, every nook of the ashrama. He had already warned everyone against criticizing his action or obstructing it or asking him why he did it. Therefore, no one could say anything. Early next morning, Kirtana started. The ring with nine jewels, Shalagram Shila, and a number of other things were put in a pot and the pot was kept over the Tulasi Mancha and under the Tulasi plant. 
everyone from ashram went around this spot while performing kirtana. While they were doing kirtana, Baba Mahashaya drew water from the well and poured it over them with a pot. When he had thus bathed each of them, he asked them to throw their dhoti uh, undergarments and all the cloth outside the boundary wall. At first, they objected. But when he infused Shakti in them, Uh, by giving each one of them a blow with the lota. I don't know what it would mean, that he hit them with this pot, lota? <laughs> or... So they readily obeyed. So they listened and began to sing and dance as nude or naked as they were born. Like children without any self-consciousness. In the ashrama, there were two birds, a shuka, or parrot, and a sarika, a black bird of the parrot species. The sarika used to say to shuka, shuka para baba parha, Dinta Jaya, O Shuka, chant the name for the time is passing. And the Shuka, other parrot, incessantly repeated Bhajanita Igora Rade Shyam Japahare Krishna Hare Ram, Radha Govinda Kehasaki Lalita Krishna Tatva Kata, O Saki Lalita. Talk of Krishna and similar other sentences. Oh. <laughs> Baba Ma Mahashaya bathed the two birds, also gave them bath. First in the winter, in, oh, sorry, first in the water boiled with barks and leaves of trees, and then with purified water of the well and left them outside the cage. He then began to sing. Tell me, O Shuka and Sari, where is my Rai, Kishori? I cannot live without Rai. In the blazing fire of separation I die. As Baba Mahashaya sang, both the birds kept looking at his face instead of flying away. As everyone had apprehended, uh, they would, as soon as they came out of the cage, so they thought the birds would fly away, but they were just looking at his face uh, as he was singing to them. When Baba Mahashaya stopped singing, they began to went around the Tulasi pot with the party performing Sankitan. After some time, with the uh, after some time, they flew into the temple and sat before the Vigraha or form of Sri Radha Kanta. in the pot placed over the Tulasi pot. <clears throat> the 
the people in ashram began to sing and dance with renewed strength. And Baba Mahashaya began to lovingly caress the parrot with his left hand. Suddenly, the parrot left his physical body and entered the divine lila. Baba Mahashaya clung the parrot's body to his chest and began to dance. Grieved by the separation of the parrot, everybody began to shed tears, though everyone wondered at, at this most auspicious uh -huh, at its most auspicious end, which even the rishis would see. But Baba Mahashaya was not separating, separating the dead body of the parrot from his chest. After some time, he went to his room and lay down with the body of the parrot on his chest. It was evening. Baba Mahashaya was still inside. Everyone was worried because the boga had not yet been offered to the taku Takur. Balaram Das was waiting outside for Baba Mahashaya's command. Suddenly, Baba shouted, Balaram, bring some prashad, fruits and sweets. Balaram brought everything. Lalita Dasi began to serve. Everyone in ashram, all nude or naked and pure in heart like children, started taking prashad. After taking prashad, everyone slept. They went to sleep. Towards the end of night, it began to drizzle, meaning falling little, rain. Baba Mahashaya came out of his room and began to dance and exclaim, O oh Lord, nectar is falling. Come, one, come all. Raise your hands and dance and chant. Let the sea of love swell and destroy the thirst and suffering of the world. All came out and began to dance and chant. After some time, Baba Mahashaya went and slept in his room with the body of the parrot on his chest as before. Slowly the day dawned, it came morning. Baba Mahashaya was still asleep. But the body of the parrot was not there. Everybody was mystified when asked as to what had, ha what had happened to the parrot. He replied, it had entered the Nitya Lila, the eternal divine Lila. But where has its physical body gone? Babaji said, the parrot has entered Vrajalila with his body. But they said, the parrot entered Vrajalila yesterday, leaving the body here. How could the dead body enter the Lila? 
And Babaji said, though the parrot left its physical body, it was still here in its subtle body to enjoy the bliss of Sankirtana. But when nectar rained, it again entered the body, the physical body, and flew with it to Nitai Kunj, where it began to chant the names of Radha Krishna. Everyone was surprised to hear this and to think of Baba Mahashaya's mercy upon the parrot. At dawn, the next day, the kirtana was resumed. But this day, the ordeal was even more difficult for the people in ashram. Baba Mahashaya made them lie down one by one and pressed their body with his feet and poured water over them. He pressed so hard that it appeared they would not survive. But as soon as he left them, left them they felt that he had breathed new life in them and new Shakti. And they began to dance and sing with redoubled energy and enthusiasm. But he did not do this to everyone. Only a few of the young people from ashram were fortunate enough to be so treated. At this stage, the stars, already on the lookout for an opportunity, uh, how to say, opportunity affected their understanding. The seniors among the people in ashram began to think that Baba Mahashaya, total absorption in non-worldly affairs had made him mentally unsound, made him crazy. They forgot all about the warning given by him and began to devise ways and means for deflecting his mind from the yagya. At night, they asked the people in ashram to stealthily go out of the ashrama one by one. Five or six of them went out. When Baba Mahashaya did not see them in the ashrama, he went out to search them with a bamboo in his hand, but could not find them. He saw the lamp post in the lane, in the road, shining bright and shouted, Maya, Maya. He put it off by throwing water over it and began to dance, dance singing. Yoga Maya Chichakti Vishuddha Sattva Parinati Dara Shakti Jive De Kaiti. The lines speak of the inconceivable 
power of yoga maya, which is the same as Swarup Shakti or the inter eternal potency of Krishna. Yoga Maya is the prime minister, the prime designer and executor of Divine Lila. As against Guna Maya, the external potency of Krishna, which clouds the vision of the jiva and causes bondage. Yoga Maya brings about his emancipation and union with Krishna. Since Baba Mahashaya was at this time engaged in a fight against Maya or Guna Maya, he often repeated these lines, perhaps by way of a challenge to Gunamaya. One may wonder why Babaji Mahashaya indulged in seemingly erratic behavior, meaning like not normal behavior of this kind, and may even be induced to regard it as a sign of madness. If suitable explanation cannot be found, explanation can perhaps be found. Perhaps he imposed such actions upon his followers as exercises in total unquestioning surrender which is necessary for spiritual progress. Perhaps he wanted us to help them rise above body consciousness and overcome such human weakness as shame, fear, and hatred, which are obstacles in spiritual development. It's interesting that here we can see mentioning some obstacles in spiritual de development. One is interestingly shame, but also fear. And we know that sometimes religions are, are actually trying to push people towards spirituality through fear. Fear of hell, fear of dying. But in our actually relationship with Radha and Krishna, actually, love is the one thing that is taking us to them and connecting us with them. And love is also the goal, love is the path. And also, they said also hatred definitely is obstacle in spiritual development. But whatever the explanation, we cannot escape the conclusion that the actions were extraordinary and indicated an extraordinary state of mind, which may be called madness. But the question is, what kind of madness? It cannot be ordinary madness. Because Baba Mahashaya was much above that, above that level. And his very touch or will could cure that kind of ailment. As we have seen it, did, uh, that, that he did in the case of Balmukunda Baba, the deputy magistrate. It must be divine madness or Divyon Mata, as the Shastras call it. Divyon Mata. Divine madness, Divyan Mata. 
<laughs> for his actions were not his own. He was only an instrument in the hands of the Lord to whom he was completely surrendered. His actions, therefore, must be beyond the level of our finite understanding. If we judge them, we must judge them not by their appearance, but by their consequences, which were wholesome, total, both physically and spiritually. Not only for his followers, but the whole city of Uri. For as we shall see, he was able to subdue the stars and bring about peace. The divine character of his action, actions is also borne out by the miracles nature of the happenings that followed. So, what was happening next? So after Baba went to Kolkata. So on reaching Kolkata, Baba was made to stay in the garden house of Kedar Babu. So Kedar Babu was mentioned before in the previous stories when Baba, uh, this uh, Baba Mahashaya was in Kolkata before. So he was made to stay in the garden house of Kedar Babu. He was still in the state of Mahabhav. On entering the garden, he saw that some plants were tied up. He untied them and began to dance in ecstasy. There was a pond in the garden with a god. God meaning that part where you enter, like dog. He got two more gods constructed, or dogs. The dog which was on the side of the garden, he called Radakund. And those on either side of it were called Laliktakund and Shyamakund. He imagined these uh, dogs to be Radakund, Shyamakund, and Lalitakund of Vrindavana, and began to behave accordingly in respect of them. Once an old man who was an asthma patient came wearing a talisman. Baba Mahashaya wanted his talisman to be thrown in Radakund. He objected to the talisman being thrown because he said the moment the talisman was, was removed, asthma became worse and life became, became unbearable. But Baba Mahashaya said to him, Do not worry, your asthma will be cured the moment you dip into Radakund. So, until uh, in, in the moment you enter Radakund, the old man threw the talisman into the pond and dipped into it, went into the pond. Surprisingly, his asthma was cured forever.
One day came Dina Bandu Kavyatirtha, person named Dina Bandu Kavyatirtha. He was wearing a golden ring, golden chain, a number of talismans, and a wrist watch. <clears throat> As soon as Baba Mahashaya saw him, he asked him to throw everything he was wearing except the cloth into the pond. For a minute, he stood still. Then saying, the Guru's order must be obeyed. He went to the pond and threw everything one by one in the pond and came back. He sat before Baba Mahashaya for two hours, talking about various subjects relating to Krishna Lila. During this period, he saw that the rings chains, watches, and talismans of a number of other people were also thrown into the pond. He began to think, why should Baba Mahashaya do this? Has he really gone mad? Instead of throwing the costly things into the pond, he could use them in some way or the other in the service of the poor and the needy. In case he intended thereby to teach detachment, that was a mental process and had nothing to do with externals. Baba Mahashaya came to know this. He smiled and said, Kavya Tirtha, you need not be sorry for the loss of all those costly things. Immediately, he, uh, Baba went and plunged into the pond. And in a single dive, brought out all the things that had so far been thrown into it, into it, all the things that were in the pond. Then handing over to Kavya Tirtha the things belonging to him, he said, see if these are yours. All those sitting were surprised. They began to say, to one another. Think, uh, how amazing! Things belonging to different people were thrown at different places in the pond at different times. And Baba Mahashaya brought them all together in a single dive. So one day, Baba Mahashaya was talking with a number of visitors. When a woman came weeping and wailing and fell at his feet. We, we saw this previous part of the story. Don't have full conclusion what happened after, <laughs> but it's until here. So one day, he was talking with some visitors when a woman came weeping and wailing, crying, and fell at his feet. And he said, Ma, why do you cry? And woman said, Baba, my only child is suffering from plague. There is no chance of his life. If he dies, I cannot live. Kindly save him, or I commit suicide, suicide at your feet. Ma, do not lose heart. 
Go and chant the name of the Lord and give him the Lord's Charanamrita. The merciful Lord will have mercy on you. But Baba, woman said, I do not want to listen anything. I cannot do anything. If you do not save him, I shall commit suicide here and now at your feet and leave the world even before my child. The woman said this and began to weep and cry. Baba tried his best to soothe her by his sweet words, but could not. Her heart-rending cries made everyone cry. At last, Baba Mahasha said, Can you bring the boy here? I can, said the woman. So she went running and brought the boy. The boy was about 10 years old. Baba Mahashaya said to the woman, Go and give him a dip in Radha Kund. The, the woman obeyed without waiting. After three or four minutes, the boy got new life and came out of Radha Kunda without anyone's help. The woman got her lost child. He took, he, she took him, the boy, to Baba Mahashaya and made him lie and surrender at his feet. Baba Mahashaya embraced him and said to his mother, Ma, you also go and have a dip in Radha Kunda and then take the boy home. Nitai Chand has saved him. Now there is nothing to fear. The devotees sitting near Baba Mahashaya began, began to admire the illiterate woman for her implicit faith, which enabled her to save her child. And in the same time, they cursed themselves for their lack of faith. At this time, there used to be a crowd of patients of all kinds around Baba Mahashaya. And he had only one medicine for all kinds of diseases. He asked every patient to go and ha have a deep, deep in Radha Kun. So everybody to cure their disease, they had to take a deep in Radha. Okay. At this time, Baba Mahasaya's mental condition was like that of a child. Generally, he was nude, naked. If anyone gave him some clothes to wear, he wore, but soon gave them away to someone. Sometime, sometimes he said, No, I shall not bathe. I will not take bath. <clears throat> he was always disinclined to eat. And could with great with, and could with great difficulty be persuaded into eating a little. After Baba Mahashaya had stayed in the garden for a few days, 
Yogen Babu took him to his house in Darjipar. One day, Girish Ghosh, the famous dramatist, came to Yogen Babu's house for the darshana of Baba Mahashar. He was wearing a number of talismans and was hardly able to speak on account of severe asthma. So again, one case with asthma. Baba Mahashaya said, Girish Babu, throw away all the talisman, talismans you are wearing. Nitai Chand will bless you and your asthma shall be cured. Girish Babu had great regard for Baba Mahashaya, but he could not believe what he said. He took off all the talismans and put them in his pocket. So he didn't throw, just put in pocket. Baba Mahashaya saw that he lacked faith. Still he gave him an embrace which cured his disease forever. So he was it merciful even if he didn't have faith. Since then, Garish Babu had desired that Baba Mahashaya should go to his theater theater hall one day and watch the performance. In, recipro in recipro oh, sorry, reciprocation, Baba Mahashaya said to Yogen Babu, one day, Yogen, I shall go and see the theater. I will go today to see the theater. The same evening, Girish Babu came and said, Baba, today we shall perform Chaitanya Lila. If you kindly come and see it, it would be fine. Baba Mahasha smiled and said, let, let Nita's will be done. So Baba Mahashaya reached the theater well in time for the performance, along with his companions. Seats were already reserved for them in the first row. When they had taken their seats, the performance began. That day's performance was different from the performance on other days. With Baba Mahashaya sitting in the hall as the veritable dynamo of bhakti, the whole atmosphere, atmosphere in the hall was so charged with the current of bhakti that the actors forgot their identity and were acting as if they were themselves the persons whose parts they were playing, as if it was not a drama that was going on, but the eternal transcendental lila itself that had come down on the stage. Everything was going well. The audience felt that they were transported into the transcendental Navadvipdam itself, where they were watching Sri Gauranga singing and dancing in ecstasy in the house of Srivas, and Nityananda going singing and dancing from door to door to preach Harinama and to convert sinners like Jagai and Madai into saints. But as soon as they saw Madai attacking Nityananda with a brick bat, Baba Mahashaya made a loud, inarticulate sound and fell unconscious on the ground. Dina Bandu 
Kavya Tirta tried to hold me. But as soon as he touched him, he was charged with the current of divine love and began to dance in ecstasy. All others who touched him were similarly affected, irrespective of the fact whether they were devotees or non-devotees, believers or non-believers. Girish Babu had to stop the drama. He was surprised to see all the sattvika bhavas appearing on the Baba, uh, the body of Baba Mahashaya. He was also overwhelmed by a new current of devotion which swept away his pride as a dramatist and made him as humble as a blade of grass. When Baba Mahashaya regained consciousness, he fell at his feet and said with folded hands, Baba, I took pride in the thought that I wrote Chaitanya Lila and presented it on the stage. But by your grace, I have now realized that Chaitanya Lila manifests itself. I have also realized that I have wasted all my life in sinful activities on account of which I will not find place even in hell. But your Kirtana song, which I heard the other day, still rings in my ears. So Baba was singing. What is bygone is bygone. So what is past is past. Let it be gone. Now hold on Nita's feet forever and, and ever. For there is time yet. Let it not fly. Make hay while the sun shines and the weather is dry. Mm -hmm. Meaning that we use this time. So what was before, it was before. Let it, we cannot change the past. Let's now hold the Nita's feet forever. Because we still have time. And let's not let it fly. And this last part, make hay while the sun shines and the weather is dry. Hay, you know, dry grass. You cannot make, uh, like you collect uh, grass when it's uh, rain. It needs to be dry. So... You let's use the time to collect all the creeper <laughs> from Nitai. Then he said more to Baba. So bless me so that I do not waste my time in trifles, in nonsense things, and hold on Nitai's lotus feet to win his grace before I die. So Baba Mahashaya was happy to hear this. He embraced and blessed him and took his leave. He left uh, the theater. So here we will end <laughs> with this part of the story because after Baba is going back to Puri, so new story starting. But it was nicely this uh, with this last part uh, by which it was finished, this, this part of the story, that past is the past. We cannot change what happened in the past. Did we do some mistakes or not? doesn't matter. We cannot change it. But what we can do is now hold 
on Nita's feet. Now we can hold. Now we can do our bhajana. Now we can connect with our Ishtadev. We still have time. We are still here. So better to use it in that way. This reminds me, this is interesting, that uh, this reminds me like when one of my friends was very sick and after he left his body, but when he was sick, we were talking a lot. And as he was talking, you know, we were talking about Krishna consciousness that time and um, I was asking, how, how do you feel now? I mean, you are sick, you are in pain. How, can you concentrate? Can you, can you think about Radha and Krishna? It's difficult. Because pain was so strong. So pain was taking his mind. So it's not always easy. My, my belief is that even if we cannot remember at that time, I believe that Radha and Krishna will remember us. <laughs> you know, this is my belief. So even if we can't remember them. But uh, the point of this also what was said, make hay, hay, make hay while the sun shines and the weather is dry. Hay meaning the dry grass, to collect dry grass. When the sun shines and the weather is dry. Now, when we can, we should do. So that our love and our connection grows all the time. So, thank you very much for today listening. I hope you enjoyed the story. It was interesting, especially how he called Radha Kund, Valita Kunshyama Kund, in his own pond in Kolkata, and they were there. This reminds me, there is one farm in Hungary uh, where they have like that lakes and also they call them Radha Kunshyama Kund. And really some energy is there when you go. Really you can feel it. Oh, this is interesting. So thank you. And until next week, take care.